Hi, welcome back to my channel. Let's continue with the clinical manifestations of pneumonia. Looking at the picture, you will see that the systemic manifestations are high fever with chills, central uh, nervous system manifestations are headaches, loss of appetite, mood swings. Skin changes, you will see there is clamminess and blueness. In the lungs, cough with sputum or phlegm, shortness of breath, pleuritic chest pain and hemoptysis. Muscular fatigue and aches will be seen. There is high heart rate. In looking at the gastric symptoms, the patient might have nausea and vomiting and also could present with joint pain. There is a rapid rising fever since there is inflammation of the lung parenchyma. Fever develops as part of the signs of an infection. Pleuritic chest pain, there is deep breathing and coughing might aggravate the pain in the chest. Rapid and bounding pulse. A rapid heartbeat occurs because the body compensates for the low concentration of oxygen in the body. There is tachypnea, wherein there is fast breathing because the body tries to compensate for the low oxygen concentration in the body. And there is purulent sputum because of the infection in the lung parenchyma, which produces sputum filled with the pus. If the condition is untreated, there could be complications like shock and respiratory failure. These complications are encountered chiefly in patients who have received no specific treatment and inadequate or delayed treatment. Another complication could be that of pleural effusion. The fluid is sent to the laboratory for analysis and there are three stages of pleural effusion, which could be uncomplicated, complicated and thoracic empyema. Always pre prevention is better than cure. It's better to prevent pneumonia and it is much safer than treating. So there are several ways of preventing. One is the patient, the people can be given pneumococcal vaccine. It can prevent pneumonia in healthy patients with an efficiency of 65% to 85%. Staff education is very important to prevent the hospital acquired infection, uh, uh, pneumonia and therefore the staff has to be encouraged and so that they are involved in the infection prevention. Infection and microbiological surveillance needs to be done. It is important to carefully observe the infection so that there could be an appropriate application of preventive techniques. Modifying the host risk for infection. The infection should never be allowed to descend on any host, so the risk must be decreased before it can affect anyone. How do we diagnose pneumonia? Very important step. Uh, the first step is that of history taking. So through history taking, particularly uh, if there is a recent history of respiratory tract infection. By physical examination, Mainly, the number of breaths per minute and breath sounds is assessed during the physical examination. Chest X-ray identifies the structural distribution, for example, whether it is lobar or bronchial, and may also reveal multiple abscesses, infiltrates, empyma, which could be due to staphylococcus infection, scattered or localized infiltration, which could be due to bacterial, or diffuse or extensive nodular infiltrates. More often, it could be due to viral infection. In mycoplasmal pneumonia, chest X-ray may be clear. Then fiber optic bronchoscopy. It may be both diagnostic, so qualitative cultures, and therapeutic for re-expansion of lung segment. ABGs in pulse oximetry. ABG, that is the um, arterial blood gas analysis. So abnormalities may be present depending on the extent of the lung involvement and the underlying diseases. Gram stain cultures, stu uh, and for that sputum collection, needle aspiration of empyema, pleural and trans 
tracheal or transthoracic fluids, lung biopsies and blood cultures may be done to recover a causative organism. More than one type of organism may be present. Common bacteria include Duplococcus pneumonia, strep Staphylococcus aureus, a hemolytic streptococcus, Haemophilus influenza, cytomegalovirus, and also it is important to note that sputum cultures may not identify all offending organisms. Blood cultures may show transient bacteremia. CBC might show leukocytosis, which is usually present, although a low WBC count may be present in viral infection. Immunosuppressed conditions such as AIDS and overwhelming bacterial pneumonia. ESR is elevated. Serological studies, for example, viral or leogenal titus, cold agglutinins, assist in differential diagnosis. Then pulmonary function studies. Volumes may be decreased, which could be due to congestion and alveolar collapse. Airway pressure may be increased and compliance decreased. Shunting may be present. Sodium and chloride, chloride levels may be low. And bilirubin may be increased. Percutaneous aspiration or open biopsy of lung tissues may reveal typical intranuclear and cytoplasmic inclusions. And there could be characteristic giant cells or rubiola. Thank you.